night coming. No matter what it is, that I'm facing. What's up? This is Travis Green. I'm headed to one of my favorite places, Warri Delta State, and hanging out with my good friends, Reverend Eagle and the Glorious Fountain Choir. Um, this is going to be an incredible conference this, this July. I need everybody to plan to be there. It's called Revival, Fire, Power, and Glory. That's right. It's a worship encounter right there in the City of Refuge every day at 3 p.m. July 20th through the 22nd. Listen, do what you can do to be in the place so we can worship and go up together. I can't wait to see you soon. Love you. <laughs> Hello there, you're welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Moment. It has been exciting for the past many days now, dwelling on the scriptures, and it's amazing the revelations that the Lord is, you know, bringing forth to, you know, our op ha us having this opportunity to meditate on the scripture. We have been dwelling on the book of John, and we've been on chapter number four for uh, a while now, and it's so amazing what we have stored up in the scripture. And you notice know, the conversation, primarily the conversation between Jesus and the woman at the well. And he was talking to her of the reality of life in the spirit. She started with tradition, you know, trying to, once she realized that he's a prophet, she brought up the issue of worship. And she didn't really know that that was what Jesus wanted to you know, discuss with her all the while. But he started by asking her for a drink of water. But beyond that, there is not much more in store, you know, concerning this meeting. And Jesus did something very, very unusual. And when he began to talk with her, once she brought the subject of religion, I mean, uh, worship into it, he saw that she was talking about religion and then began to focus our attention, you know, into the real thing. And, you know, in verse number 23, he made her realize the outcome it and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And he began to show her the way. And then we stopped to verse number 24 where he was talking about the fact that they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why? God is his spirit. And it takes people in the same realm, you know, to communicate. You don't communicate with a goat. No, you don't. Uh, you don't communicate with, with some other kind of creatures. You communicate with your fellow human beings. And, you know, and now you commu communicate because there's something common, all right? Communication had to do with encoding and decoding. Now, the things of God are spiritual. Now, until you become a spiritual being also, I mean, active with your spirit man alive, you will not be able to have you know, a deep and intimate relationship with God. And that is the essence of Jesus dying on the cross so we can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God Almighty. Now going on to verse number 25. Now let's see what the woman, you know, said after Jesus said so. Verse 25 tells us, and look at what it says. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. You see, this woman was of the last, last tribe of Israel, the Samaritans, I told you earlier on. So they are not oblivious of the prophecies, prophecies given over time. And they too have been waiting for the Messiah, just like some other, you know, religious group talk about the Messiah, all right? Most of them who do that are some are connected to Abraham and also lay claim to Moses the prophet. And you know, these persons, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Moses, the lawgiver, and others spoke about the Messiah, all right? And it's the expectation of all who have this connection. And the woman was not talking about it. You know, that's verse number 25. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming. He who, he who is called the Christ, the anointed, the anointed one. And when he arrives, look at Anna. When he arrives, he will tell us everything we need to know and make it clear to us. Now, people have been looking for what is already there. Look at, you know, she was talking about the Messiah, and everyone knew that the Messiah has the answer, all right? In verse 26, Jesus said to her, 
I who now speak with you am he. Am he. Now Jesus didn't let that pass. Anything about his identity, he doesn't play with that. He doesn't unnecessarily hide it. All right? He said, I am he. That Messiah you are talking about, he's the one talking to you right now. And this is such an amazing moment for this woman. You know, the prophets of old would look forward to see the Messiah. They didn't. Anointed prophets, they didn't. A lot of people who, who heard the teachings of those prophets looked forward to see the Messiah, hoping it will happen in their time. Now here is somebody who in all description doesn't really feel the same. And somebody whose life has been messed up and who doesn't really seem to be someone that God will reveal himself to. Here is she standing, talking, having a conversation with the Messiah. It's amazing how the love of God is made manifest. The love of God knows no bound. He is not looking at your outward righteousness. God loves each one of us as though we are the only ones in the universe. He loves you much more you, than you can imagine. He loves you so much, he's willing to reveal himself to you. See, Jesus went all the way to Samaria to reveal himself to this woman, and then afterwards, several others you know, encountered him. Now, look at, well, I, you, let's see the reaction. Now, verse 27, just then his disciples came and they wondered, were surprised, astonished to him, I mean, to find him talking with a woman, a, a married woman. However, not one of them asked him, what are you, you know, inquiring about? Or what do you want? Or why do you speak with her? Now, you see, Jesus loved her so much. We're going to continue on this tomorrow on the issue from verse number 27. Jesus loved her so much in spite of her imperfections, in spite of her story. Um, you know, with such persons, they will say life has not been fair, all right? But Jesus spent, I mean, quality time with this woman. The disciples were not there. Nobody else was there. You see, no matter what you are, have gone through or what you are in, we have a Savior who loves you so much. The church may reject you because of her preconceived notion of righteousness, all right? There are a lot of people in church who are very legalistic, all right? They judge you from the outward. But this is the Lord God Almighty made manifest in the form of his Son. And he just demonstrated that he loves us just the way we are. But he doesn't want to leave us the way we are. He came for this woman. And you know what? Reading the story further, you come to see that her life was never be, was never again the same. All right? And so we want to continue on this tomorrow. I encourage you to be part of the broadcast tomorrow. Um, I promise you something. God is going to do something really, really, really revolutionary. Something that is going to cause a worship revolution on the inside. We have a God who loves us. And all you just need to do is accept that love that was demonstrated by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, giving himself for you so you might be saved. Accept him today as your Lord and Savior, and your life will never be the same again. Till I come your way again tomorrow, this is Igor Luis Yegbebo. God bless you.